Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to more Terra Invicta. We are playing as the Resistance, and in the last video, we spent a lot of effort building up our science production. We're now making about 4,000 science per month as of January 2030. That feels pretty darn good for me. We could make this a lot better, of course, by boosting up our research category bonuses, which you can see down at the bottom. Some of these are lagging behind. I'm already building up some Tier 2 research orbitals around Earth to help speed that up but we could definitely get a lot more value out of that. So that's gonna be a top priority. If we contrast ourselves with, let's say, all the other factions, I'm actually making more science, well, about as much science, as the Protectorate, Humanity First, Initiative, Servants, and Exodus all combined. I mean, I know the AI is a low bar, but that feels at least pretty good. So, what are some things we wanna do in this video? Well, we are going into 2030. This is now entering what I consider the precarious period of the game, and it's gonna last for this entire decade. This is the period when we're gonna start expanding around in space enough that we're gonna draw the aliens' attention, and we don't want that because they're gonna come over here and start swatting us down. But we also can't afford to just sit back and wait for a while. We have to continue expanding as much as we can and push that boundary. Otherwise, when the aliens eventually do come to Earth and try to land in force, we're not going to be ready for them. So a couple of priorities are going to be building out even more MC capacity, whether we use it or not is a different question. Continue building up my space economy, especially with volatiles, because I'm going to start using a lot of this. And we need to start investing a lot more in our military, in the US, in the European Union, and wherever else we're going to have some armies. We also could steal some armies. I have enough governing capacity available that taking over the UK from the servants is very, very appealing to me. We're currently working on Poland since they're about to be capped out on the uh, mission control that they can have in this region. But the UK, with two armies, plus get them a navy, plus some nukes, plus actually pretty decent tech on par with the US, yeah, we want to get these guys on our side, and we want to deny the servants access to another army, because they're being very, very, very aggressive in this game. So I'm going to be focusing on a lot of that. Now, before I continue, I want to address something I said in the last video, which has since been updated, and that is the ratio of MC to alien hate. And if you don't know what I mean by this, the diplomatic system in this game is... Fairly straightforward, uh, at least at least as far as I know it is anyway. So over here on the right, we have the estimated alien threat level. And each of these diamonds represents a total of 10 hatred. Once it gets to 50, you are considered to be in an at-war state with uh, the aliens, and they will start to attack you. This is the same thing, by the way, with all of the factions. If we look at the, look at the servants and our relations, we're at war with them. This means that they have at least more than 50 hatred with me, which makes sense. I've done a lot of things to antagonize them, so it's probably more like in the 200 category, but you get the idea. Idea. Anyway, uh, as the Resistance and as Humanity First, you have a mi minimum floor of 20 hatred. You're always going to have the aliens angry at you. But you also have to worry about your MC. The more MC you have, the more that floor is going to increase. At least, you know, whatever's highest. Either 20 or it's something like 0.3 times the number of MC you have. Whatever's highest ends up being your floor. It used to be 0.4. So when I was saying you could get up to about 80 or 85 or 90 mission control... That's what that ratio was based on. A couple of patches ago, they changed that. So instead of 0.4 hate per used mission control, it's now 0.3. So you can actually build out a little bit more in space before the aliens start to attack you. But the point is, we've got to be very careful. As we build this up, every time we do something to hurt the aliens, like let's say detain their alien or assassinate them or even attack the servants, this value will go up and it'll start passively going down per month, but once it gets above 50, they're going to start destroying all my stuff in orbit. And that's especially bad because at least one of these guys down over here, there it is, that's a dreadnought. This thing will destroy every station I have. So let's try really hard not to antagonize them. Anyway, let's go ahead and launch a bunch of additional mines, use up some of this MC to start building up our space economy. I do need some volatiles, so he has a couple of uh, asteroids, which could work out pretty nicely for me. Not seeing a lot of other big sites on, like, Mars or Ceres or anything that's going to work. We're going to have to do some asteroid mining. So I've got the best fissiles. We'll get that to Tier 2. I'm definitely going to go ahead and grab this site on Hertha, because that's pretty outstanding from a noble's perspective. And in terms of water, we're actually doing about as good as we could hope. And water is actually the only resource I feel really good about. So, yeah, let's go ahead and grab all of these. If you're having trouble finding the dang asteroid, by the way, you don't want to just, like, zoom out in the solar system and search every single asteroid looking for it. Just go to the prospecting over here, right? Find the one that you want and just click this. It'll take you directly there. Way faster. 
The big downside to building anything on asteroids is it does tend to take a very long time. 617 days to arrive. Ouch, dude. Ouch. But okay. I mean, the sooner we get this going, the sooner we get some profit. Okay, I'm now up to all of my 82 mission control just by setting up some extra halves around Mercury, plus also getting some of those mines up and running. Cool, all right, so let's go ahead and try to integrate Poland into the EU, snag some of that mission control, that's gonna help me at least a bit. If you don't know, by the way, the way this works is um, regular territory uh, provinces over here, like this one right here in Kiev, uh, Kiev, is gonna only have a maximum of six mission control. If it has something over here that is called a core economic region, which should be here somewhere in Poland, is this it? Yeah, core economic region, you can have eight. That's how that works. So I know that we're very close to that cap. That's kind of why I'm happy to integrate Poland. The nanotube filament radiators are done. Beautiful. Also the Life Science Research Center. And we can interrogate the Hydra. This is something we need to do for sure. Um, for advancing our story, but for other reasons as well, which I'll get into eventually. I do think we want to work on that. I also need to get things like the Fission Reactor Array, and I need to get the Material Research Center up and running. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and do both of those real quick. The Fission Reactor Array, because it's a Tier 2 uh, power station for places like Mars, so I can actually make use of some bigger and better mines. So I do need that. And then, obviously, the Research Centers, because, well, research is kind of important for me. Um, other techs that I'm going to want... Honestly, most of these missiles aren't going to do me a lot of good. The Riverjack, maybe I'll pick up. Just for some early game warfare, but a lot of people are kind of of the conclusion that uh, missiles and torpedoes aren't usually that great in this game. And by that, what I mean is point defense is very much a thing in this game. If we research some laser, uh, laser tech, we will definitely be able to do that. You just shoot the missiles out of the sky. Doesn't mean it's easy, right? It's totally possible for missiles to somehow get through, but it shouldn't be very likely, especially against the aliens. They are going to have lots of point defense. So all we can do is either spray so many missiles they can't possibly stop them all, or we're just going to have to accept that missiles are probably not going to be a great long-term solution. I'm getting very annoyed with the AI trying to snag things like the European Union. The Protectorate in particular is really gunning for me. It seems like the servants hate humanity first. They're declaring war on them right and left. But the Protectorate just, ah, oh man, they're, they're doing everything they can to undermine me in places like Kazakhstan, the EU, and even the US. I've seen them occasionally make some changes. And I've had to go over here and shore things up. The more countries under my control, the more annoying it's going to be to keep the public sentiment on my side. That's actually one argument in favor of trying to create some super states, even if you don't have as much of a direct control of the budget. Maybe it's still worth it, simply because... <laughs> You only need two people to keep two giant nations under control, rather than have to bounce around between eight. Unity movements is done. Okay. So do we move directly into great nations at this point? It's still going to take a very long time to get the full unification of North America that I'm looking for. Um, this is a little bit deceptive, by the way, as far as what this does. So United North America is actually only a union between the US and Canada. That's it. However, once you pick up that project, it's going to lead to, what is it, Greater United North America? At that point, you get to unify things like Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, blah, blah, blah. Um, which takes a ridiculous amount of research. So I could argue that this isn't worth pursuing right now, except that it is kind of fun. What else do we want, though? You know, it would be smart to go ahead and just pick up things like the Directed Energy Warfare for the point defense, but also start learning how to make lasers. And we'll also want to learn how to make rail guns and coil guns at some point, too. Like, there's a lot we need. Let's go ahead and start working on the advanced superconductors. I think that's going to take a while. And if I want to commit to fusion, then this is going to be one really big step to doing that. You know something else I would like to do? I'd like to make contact with some of the other factions, specifically anybody who is not the Protectorate or the Servants. Because I want to get these guys to not be in a conflicting state with me if possible. So Project Exodus, for example, is in conflict. If we can improve relations with these guys a little bit, then they'll be in a tolerant state, and they're going to stop messing with me. Same thing can be said about things like Humanity First, the Initiative, the Academy. I mean, I know I've taken things from all of you, I've peeved all of you off, but I want to encourage the AI to focus their efforts elsewhere and leave me alone as much as possible. The Servants and the Protectorate, I mean, it's too late. There's nothing I can do about that, but these guys I can keep off my back, so I don't have to defend myself on too many fronts. At least I hope. See? There's the initiative. Hi, how you doing there? So, I've got some stuff I don't want. For example, I'm over my MC cap right now, and there's at least a few bases that aren't producing much of anything for me. The Sun Tzu base on Luna is one of them. 
It's actually probably more of a liability at this point than anything else. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we're gaining nothing. Part of that's because, like, the mine is turned off, and oops, I should probably have turned that on, but it's still not getting me very much out of this. I don't think this is worth holding on to for the MC, so I want to get rid of it. So what we can do then is go ahead and offer this, and as long as it says a generous trade, what this does is it burns off a chunk of hate. I don't remember the exact number, but it's a pretty decent amount, like 16 or something. This might end up being enough to get them over to a tolerant state so we have nothing to worry about. Now, if I can get some money along the way, I'll happily do that. Can I get like 13,000 bucks? That's still considered generous. Yay, I like that. Okay, let's shoot for as much as I can get. That's a fair trade. Perfect, that gets me a lot of cash when I frankly don't ever have a lot of cash. I get rid of a base I don't care about, which is probably gonna be a liability to you, and I get some better relations. Yay, do we immediately see the benefit of this? Yeah, see, now we're at a tolerant state. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So if I can do that with some other folks, that's probably worth it to me. Just finished another round of some of these research habs, by the way, which is going to hurt my volatile production a lot. But we're up to 5,000 science per month as of March. That's a 20% increase from where we were just two months ago. That's how good these things are. It's ridiculous. So that's going to speed up a lot more technology. And we have our material research lab done. Excellent. So what do I want next? None of these drives are outstanding, I think. Let me check something. The pulsar drive at some point could be worthwhile. I don't know if we unlock this, we'll unlock the advanced pulsar drive. That would make sense. That's actually a pretty good one. Um, can I see this specifically? There's a way. Here it is, advanced pulsar drive. Yes, the only thing stopping me from getting that right now would be researching this. That could be worthwhile. It's a pretty decent one. I'd argue it's probably better than the advanced Nerva drive as a uh, regular set of course. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and research the pulsar drive. Let's just knock that out. That's my coup in Poland, by the way, which of course means it's about time to go to war. That said, if we can also wait on the war just long enough to get this mission control the rest of the way, that would also be great. So let me turn off literally everything else. Oh, we also just unlocked the Europe Ascendant project over here. I think this just gets me claims on, yeah, parts of Eastern Europe slash Russia uh, and also Turkey. Mm. It's okay, but I'm not gonna go ahead and say that that's a high priority. I think there are better things I could get. My MC continues to grow. Um, let's go back to Mars, and I think it's time to start getting some tier two settlements, especially wherever I have really high uh, output. So for example, this is a great spot for a settlement core. And now that I have the fission arrays, this should be easy. We'll get this set up. And uh, I should probably do this on at least a few locations. I would like to get a nano factory set up uh, on Mars because I think that's supposed to give me a nice boost when it comes to constructing other tier two modules. That said, it's gonna take a very, very long time. So maybe I just go ahead and pick the best sites and start upgrading them now. Oh my God, the farm project is finally available. Holy crud. <laughs> we waited an entire video for this dang thing and now here it is. Oh my God, fine. All right, we'll get that. So farms aren't like the end all be all. I'm kind of overemphasizing them a little bit, but they are a way of greatly reducing your water and your volatile consumption per month set up a bunch of farms and each one is worth like 7.5 volatiles per month, something around there. So it's good to have if you don't want to set up a whole load more mines. Japan just declared war on Poland. Why? I don't know what happens if the servants arrive here while I'm actively sieging this down. I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to be way too late to matter, but why? What exactly are they trying to accomplish? Gosh dang, the servants are so aggressive in this particular game. They're actually doing really well on military tech, too. Japan, I think, now actually is the most advanced military in the world. With, looks like, three armies, though at least one of them's not under their control. So, yeah, they're, um, they're really focusing on turning Japan into a military powerhouse. Can't imagine that's gonna work out well. And there goes Poland. Hooray! Everyone goes home. So how much more do I dare increase my mission control? We're kind of getting to a point where I don't want to go much further than this. If I am correct on how this works, right, so our 92, you would multiply that by 0.3, that's 27.6. That is the absolute minimum that our hate is able to go with, with the aliens. Of course, it's probably a lot higher than that, though. Keep in mind that not only can you generate hate with the aliens by attacking them, destroying their stuff, capturing their counselors, whatever it's going to be, but also, to a degree, 
they pick up some hate from the servants and from the protectorate. Less so for the protectorate, more so for the servants. And we've kind of been messing with the two of them a lot. This right here is only an estimate, and it's got a delay. I don't know when the last time this was updated. It says December of 2028. Yeah, we're in 2030. We're probably a lot higher in threat than this says right here. So... I probably can go a bit higher in my mission control. I can probably go up to about 105-ish and feel relatively safe. In theory, I should be able to go up to about 120. But in practice, I feel like we need to be cautious. 105 is probably about as far as I'm willing to go right now. Ooh, volcano erupts. Hooray, that's terrible. Okay. Um, things like that can actually impact the carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere, and climate change is very much a thing in this game. So far, we've been able to avoid a lot of it, but if we continue building out our economy, especially if we continue using the spoils priority for countries, we're going to pop a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere. Volcanoes certainly don't help, but I can't control that. Anyway, the farm tech is finally done. Excellent. Let's go for... Uh, let's go ahead and continue working on the PSYOPs so we can get even more unrest in our missions. That'll be great. And let's go to some of our HABs. So if we go to Mercury on this research station, the way this works is crew have a certain amount of maintenance associated with them in the terms of waters and volatiles. And then different stations also will use some of those resources. Farms eliminate the maintenance for 250 crew, not the stations, just the crew. So I'm pretty sure this should be about seven water, seven volatiles, something along those lines. There's no point in building farms on stations where you have a very, very small crew, but for our research station with 750 people on it, we could toss three on here and I'd feel pretty good about that. Another round of research stations done. That boosts us up to almost 6K science. Okay. And you can see that at least a few of my research categories are improving. I'm in the process of building out a life science station, so that's going to go up. Plus, we should have some materials and space science going up as well. Looking really good on that front. I honestly don't know how much better we could be doing on science. I'm prioritizing science way more than probably anything else. Mostly because I just hate sitting around and waiting forever. There's the advanced superconductors done. Okay. So what do we need next? If we wanted to continue down the fusion route, uh, in order to get the fusion in space tech, we need the high temperature superconductors, which actually is going to help us lead toward things like coil gun batteries anyway. So I do see this as being good, though 35,000 research is obviously kind of a lot still. But then so is stuff like the Great Nations. So I don't know. At some point, it's just, it's always going to suck. But... I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on things like the high temperature superconductors just so we can continue making progress. Ugh. Science is, there's so many competing priorities in this game. Some people find it overwhelming. I do too, but I, I at least appreciate that it's a game that it's not got an obvious path forward. You want a lot of things all at once and you gotta pick and choose what's worth it to you. Diamondoids tech is finally done. Holy crud, that took forever. All right, so that's going to unlock a really, really good armor for the rest of the game. Um, now, I think, is the time to go ahead and start working on some simple, cheaper techs like the Directed Energy Warfare. Just go ahead and unlock stuff like the lasers. And I need things like the Civilian Photonic Computing done because this is going to give me some extra governing cap. Though, actually, we're at 461 all of a sudden. Maybe we're fine on this. Whatever, it's going to be nice anyway. Um, I'll make this a lower priority. Yeah, let's go ahead and knock some of this stuff out. Get this Hydra interrogation out of the way, and for God's sake, make progress toward fusion. Let's trade with Project Exodus. What can I do to make them like me? We could give them some resources. I certainly don't need a lot of this stuff, like some boost and whatever else. We could also give them some basic tech, which would probably make them pretty happy. Uh, organizations I don't need. Yeah. I don't know if just giving, like, let's say one thing is considered to be... Eh, let's see. What does it take to get, like, generous? Hmm. Yeah, okay, so you can't just give, like, one thing, and they give zero, and therefore it's considered generous. It's not entirely a ratio. There is certain minimum balances necessary. So, yeah, 1,000 ops, for example, would be considered a generous trade. Interesting. What about, like, um, like this, Apollo Innovations, right? That's, uh, that's worth some science and stuff. I'm not using it. I'm probably not going to. So, can I give you this for some money, and this would still be considered to be generous? Maybe. Yeah, 5,000 bucks. That's good generosity, we'll stop being at conflict, and I get rid of something I'm not using anyway. Definitely worth it. I meant to do this a while ago. Let's actually upgrade um, the lunar base to tier two, because I want to get my... 
Upgraded mining outpost set up over there. It's the only Luna base I plan on holding on to. The fact that this is still, to this day, the best site of fizzle materials we know about is pretty fortuitous for me. I'm glad I grabbed that when I did. Let's go ahead and research that adamantane armor. If you don't want to wait for diamondoids, I think nanotube armor is also quite good. Um, this, I think, is just more resistant for effectively the same cost, I think. So adamantane is a really, really good mid-game option. We're going to pick this up. I want to slap this onto pretty much every ship that I end up building. And the Hydra interrogation project is done. Alrighty, this is a big step for us. So, what have we learned exactly? We did some sort of an interrogation, rather tense. Apparently, they are quite willing to speak, though whether it's cooperative might be a slightly different thing. Uh, let me take a look at this transcript real quick. So it looks like the Hydra are all happily members of a defense consensus. There's some pride around that. Uh, they are needing some sort of astronomical body, presumably Earth or at least something in the solar system with resources necessary for something, some sort of a project. Wild species must be kept at safe separation. I'm presuming that's us, the humans. So they want to keep us away from some project they're working on. Access to gate is forbidden. What is the gate? I won't tell you. So I think this answers the question that we had earlier in this campaign. How did they get here and what is their purpose? I mean, I think we're going to have a mission following this to find out for sure what the purpose is. But my suspicion now is they're trying to build some sort of a gateway network that will link this solar system to their home world and make it easier to control. Which makes me think the victory condition for the resistance is probably going to involve destroying that gate somehow. I am going to risk building one more orbital around Earth. Just one. I don't think we're going to need any more than that for now. Um, what I want is a little bit more space science, but also I think it's time to build out some sort of a shipyard. We need a dock. Some place where I will be able to construct some warships, because it feels like we're reaching that stage of the game, or at the very least, I want to be able to defend myself. So a couple of solar arrays to start. Let's also pick up the shipyard, tier two modules. I'm gonna build at least two of these for now. We'll wanna have some defenses, so we'll leave that. And then let's go ahead and just get some space science. And that's going to kind of just shore me up where I'm currently the weakest. And I think this is going to have to be good enough for now. Do I want another shipyard? I feel like we're going to get some defenses at some point, And we're going to need to have some space for more power, plus some layered defenses to just kind of ward people off. I need to keep my shipyard active at all times. We do not want the aliens taking that sucker down. Really? I failed in my coup? I had an 87% chance and I rolled a 92. Are you kidding me? Gosh dang it. It's like the siege is an EU-4 all over again. We've got the directed energy warfare. Do you want to go ahead and start working toward great nations now? I think the answer is yeah. Let's go ahead and get that going. Shave off a pretty hefty amount of time on these. Yeah, seems all right. So we'll take this from June. We can shave off a full year, more than a year, by prioritizing this a bit more. I think that's worth it. Again, it's not like Great Nations is super high priority because then we'll have to spend like 25,000 research to just unify Canada, only Canada, to the United States. And then like another 30 something thousand research to be able to pick up everything else. And even then, that's gonna weaken the US by like a lot, picking up all these poorer and less stable nations. It's one of the reasons I'm trying to build up Mexico at least a little bit, so it's not nearly as bad when we end up integrating it. Well, there's my coup in the UK, but because I failed the first time, they were able to reduce the unrest just enough that uh, I was not able to grab the Prime Minister's office. That's fine. We'll just have to take it the old-fashioned way. There we go. The UK is now fully under my control. I can manage the budget, and I can break off a whole load of alliances. We are going to be allying, of course, with the US and the European Union, because I want to be able to bring in this army. We've got navies, and they're a pretty decent army, so these guys will be very helpful for my power projection abroad. Here comes a whole bunch more of the nano factories on Mercury. Okay, so our money has definitely solved itself and gone back up. That's great. Still in the negative on volatiles, but a big part of that is because my mining stations on Mars are all dismantled and upgrading to Tier 2. I'm trying to also upgrade things on Luna because we need to get more fissile production over here. And right now, yeah, it's going to be until December. So a couple more months. Once done, though, this one mine is going to start producing 27 fizzle materials with all the bonuses we currently have stacked up. 
that's kind of a lot. I'd like to point out, by the way, how the farms are working. So if you looked over at this station where I had a bunch of research sites, this was setting up like, I don't know, it was like minus 40 or so. Uh, water and volatiles. By having three farms on here, that's kinda, uh, that takes care of 750 crew, we have 740, all of a sudden the maintenance drops down to only minus 20. So that's basically all the material we are spending just keeping the research campuses online. It's still expensive, and yeah, it does suck to use up some of the module slots on your precious habs uh, for something as simple as water and volatiles. You'd rather get more value out of each MC and have more research campuses, but it does stop the bleeding a little bit, at least until my mines can get back online. So I'm going to say that this was worth it. Ooh, okay. This is a really important tech. Strategic Deception. This is going to allow me to increase the amount of MC I have in space and lower the Hatred lower floor that I have been talking about earlier in the video. So we can basically just start taking advantage of more stuff in space without having to worry about the aliens attacking me. That's a pretty big deal. I really, really, really want to get that tech because the more MC I have, the more space industry I have, the more ships I can have, the more research stations I can have, etc. Uh-oh. I did not, however, expect the aliens to attack in space. What did they do? What did they do? Hang on, hang on. Uh, it sounds like the aliens weren't expecting humanity to leave the confines of the homeworld, and they probably are doing something. Right. Where, where, where are you, and what have you done? Have you done something? Have you attacked me? I can't tell. It's impossible to know whether they really peeved at me because this thing refuses to update. So that's actually something that people are complaining about and supposedly it's going to get patched pretty soon. So this actually does auto-update. As far as I know, the only way to really force this to update is to actually engage the aliens in some way, like detain a Hydra. But doing so gives you so much hate, they'll just start killing me immediately. Which, uh, you know, understandably, I'd really rather not have happen. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if they attacked someone else. Oh. Hello, it says here our monitoring stations have seen an uptick in alien activity in the solar system. If we do not pull back, then we'll be under attack. I think your uh, counselors warn you whenever you've crossed over the 42 hate threshold. So odds are pretty good that either I'm already over 50 and they're coming to attack me, or we are just barely under, and if I do anything to expand or upset the aliens, there's a very good chance they're gonna come and break all of my toys. So I may have overdone it a little bit, but getting the strategic deception tech would certainly help with that a lot. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you poor pathetic servants. You're trying to research alien tech. You've made 7,000 research into it. Yeah, no. Get sabotaged. No alien tech for you, sucker. Okay, finally. A level of fusion has been discovered. Excellent. So, what do we want next? Very good question. Probably military tech, since it seems like the enemy is very eager to fight me pretty soon. Working toward that nuclear fusion in space is going to be really important. Getting the rail guns, particle cannons, infrared combat lasers, all of that will be good. Um, let's go ahead and start working on some simpler things that I know I'm going to want. The kinetics warfare comes to mind. So let's learn how to make big guns. Almost have a third navy for the EU. There it is. All right, a new navy has been launched, which means all... Whoops, hello. All of my EU armies now have full global access. Very, very good. Okay, um, let us, let us go ahead and start boosting up more in the military tech world, I think. I know a lot of other things might suffer in the process, but we really need the EU to play catch up here. Adamantane armor is done, thank God. All right, uh, let's go for, oh gosh, everything keeps rearranging every time I come back from a break. Uh, let's go for the strategic deception tech. Top priority, absolute top priority. Get that sucker out there, and we're going to be looking a whole lot better. With the adamantane armor, we can actually start designing some ships. But what kind of ships do I want? Probably some simple missile boats, only because uh, we'll be able to use those to basically shoot down the enemy, and that's kind of all they're going to be good for. So a monitor isn't bad. You can get a whole load of missiles on this sucker. If anything, it might be overkill, but if I build, like, let's say, four of these things, it's definitely enough to take out an enemy. So, let's take a look at some hull weapons. I do have river jack missiles, which I think will do just fine for me. So we can set up, let's say, four of those. As far as the utility module, you always want to have a heat sink to draw the heat away uh, from the other components of the ship if you can't activate your radiators. So a lithium heat sink should be a somewhat light-ish weight option, and I don't need to absorb a ton of heat, so this should be fine. 
We'll probably put a magazine or two on this thing so it has simply more missiles to launch. We do have the nanotube uh, filament radiators. So that's going to let us release a lot of energy. Quantum battery. No, lithium ion battery. Sorry. Get that sucker up. Uh, we'll need some power. We'll need a drive. Do I want the pulsar drive? Probably. Um, it's a pretty decent one. I don't know if it's better than the advanced Nerva drive. Let's uh, increase, let's say, some tanks and just get one level of drive and get a quick comparison. So, 0.88 KPS. 350 milligies of combat acceleration. Very slow to cruise. Or, more KPS. But, worse combat milligies. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we want to go for the advanced Nerva drive, at least until I can get advanced Pulsar drives. And then we have the Adamantane armor, which again, this stuff's very, very ex uh, expensive, and most importantly, it's very heavy. That's why you want to have a strong, lightweight option. And by a long shot, at 21 tons per nose or tail armor point, that is so much lighter than the other options, which increases the overall range and capabilities of my ship. We want to get some nose armor for sure. And then we want to probably just get uh, combat acceleration there. Yeah, I need to get at least a bit of propellant on here. We'd like to get maybe 8 KPS. It's going to take a lot of water. Um, let's say 8.3. So 460 milligies. That's okay-ish. It's not a great ship, but it's a decent ship. And this is basically just going to throw out a ridiculous number of missiles so that we can kill the aliens. And then it'll probably get destroyed from there. Right? Probably. We'll call this a, mm, I don't know, interceptor vehicle. And I'm going to go ahead and save the surprise class. Makes a lot of sense. And then we want to go to our ships. And we want to go to construction. And add a couple of these ships to the queue. It's going to take me about 200 days. But then we're going to have four of these monitors ready to go. We probably don't even need that many if I'm honest. Three would probably be sufficient. So let's cancel one of those. Three of them in 200 days. It's going to take six mission control. We'll shoot down an enemy ship. And then we'll have to weather the storm as they get really, 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 really angry with me. All right, I think this is a good place for me to end this particular video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.